And now, as they say, time for a different kind of chi-squared test. So this time, rather than a one sample variance ratio test, this is a chi-squared test for count data. So this chi-squared test is commonly used for count data and is simple and useful. So it's often applicable if you can express your data as a table of counts. And there's some examples in this book by Cortinas and Black, chapter 16. I will give an illustration by example now. So my idea really in including this, it won't be on the assessment for this module, but maybe it has some help to dissertation students. So it's quite common when people do uh, dissertations sometimes, especially in sort of social science type areas, that the data that they collect can be expressed in the form of what are called contingent tables, which are essentially just a table of counts. And if so, then this chi-squared test can often be used. And I would reiterate that even if you're not particularly interested in these sorts of techniques, often they can have deceptively broad application within accounting and finance and other areas of social science. So for this example then, so what you've got in this table is a sort of very simple contingency table. So essentially what you're looking for is a table that can be expressed in this sort of uh, grid format. So you've got one category on the top and another category going down. So things going down are called columns and the things going across are called rows. And I have a nasty feeling there's a typo somewhere in some of my lecture slides. So here we have this example based on residential ownership status by region, and you want to see if the residential status depends on region. So the null hypothesis is that there is no association between residential status and region. So there's a slightly weird way of, of organizing this. You first of all assume there's no relationship between residential status and region, and then look for evidence against that. So if you reject the null hypothesis, then you do in fact conclude there is a relationship between residential status and region. And in the UK, London house prices are famous for being very expensive. So you would expect to find that with this uh, faux data set, that because house prices in London are so expensive, relatively few people own their own homes, most people would rent. So the chi-squared test then is conducted as follows. So what you have to do is calculate the expected number for each square in a table. And what you would do is compare that with the actual observed numbers that you've got in the table on the previous slide. So how you calculate these expected numbers, what you do is you take the row total, multiply by the column total, and then divide by the total number of observations in the sample. So on the bottom half of the slide, what you've got here is the chi-square statistic and this is just a measure of distance between the observed numbers and the expected numbers. And the idea is that if the observed and the expected numbers are very similar, then this chi-square statistic is very small, representing a small distance between the observed and the expected numbers. In contrast, if the distance between the observed and the expected numbers is large, then this chi-square statistic will also be large, and this will lead to a large value of the chi-square statistic which will ultimately enable you to reject the null hypothesis if there is a big difference between these observed and expected numbers. Now, I ought to say here that I think this rows and columns are the right way around, despite my previous statements. The R is the number of rows going across, which is three on the previous slide, and C is the number of columns going down, which would be two on the previous slide. So in order to calculate these expected values, then you're using the formula from the previous slide, which is just that the expected number in each column of the table, each cell of the table rather, would be the row total times the column total divided by total number of the sample. OK, so what we've got here in this table is the blow-by-blow count for each 
So the table and the expected number is the row total times the column total divided by the total number of the sample and the total number of the sample is 8588 in this case. So if you look at the six cells of the main table, the top is 8588 and the bottom half of the fraction is this. Total by the column total in each case, and you should get, I think, that the uh, observed counts are roughly the same order of magnitude as the observed counts, and you should also get that the row totals of this table and match the row totals of the previous table, and the column totals in this table also match the column totals of the previous table. Okay, but everything basically revolves around. Expected number of counts is the row total times the column total divided by the total number of observations in the sample. Once we've calculated these observed and expected values, we can then calculate the chi square statistic. So, this is again just a measure of the distance between the observed and the expected values. So, if you look at the first line of the equation on this slide, if the uh, Observed value matches the expected value exactly, then this would be a value of zero. And there should be a condition sign on this first line of the equation. Distance between the observed number in each cell and the expected number in each cell, and then add them all up. So in this case, for this example, this works as follows. And as ever with these uh, sorts of statistical tests, I would say that if ever you're doing a hand calculation, make sure that you write down all your workings in order to make it less likely you will make a silly mistake. I've taught students that have done this before, done their working and made mistakes in the numerical calculation. And I think as well, the thing to emphasize here is both that there's a communication aspect in terms of how you communicate your working out of this, if you're having to do this by hand, and also a systematic bit. Okay, so if you systematic and present this nicely and work through it logically, you're less likely to make a mistake. These chi square calculations are in grim detail, so they should work as follows. And again, I would say a calculation like this by hand, make sure you present it nicely so that somebody marking this can read it and So I would say that uh, if you're systematic and work through this logically without rushing it, you're less likely to make a mistake. So on this slide then you've got the calculations for the chi-squared test in uh, a lot of detail and I've tried to provide as much detail as possible in these sorts of numerical calculations. And I think, as I said before, there's two things to sort of really emphasise here, both trying to present the thing out nicely so that you can read your own working and somebody else marking this could read it if you were doing this by hand. And again, I think taking your time and being as logical and systematic in your working means that you're less likely to make a mistake. And it's a good training for other aspects of practical project work. Uh, the more systematic and methodical you are, the more likely it's also possible mistakes that you might have made. So, referencing the tables and interpretation then, so from the tables, the chi-squared two value for the 5% significant level is 5.99. This is much less than 0.2, which is the value of the chi-squared statistic. There's evidence P less than 0.05 that residential status depends on area. So, what you have here is a common sense cross check because you might reasonably anticipate from the wider context that because London house prices are famously so expensive, you would expect that relatively few people living in London would be able to afford their own homes and you'd expect to find relatively more people in London renting. And then what we've, we've calculated the chi-square statistic here, 
what we've done here is just to produce a simple table of percentages to point to the interpretation of the results. So there is a difference between uh, different regions in terms of the residential and ownership status. And once you calculate this table of percentages, it's obvious that the big difference is between London and the rest of the country. Similar, the percentages show you no association between relatively few people own their homes in the London area. So in order to run the chi-squared test in R, this is relatively straightforward, again because this is a sort of standard test which R is designed for. So how you do this is you need to enter the data as a matrix with the observations in the right order. So the way to do this with the first line of R code there Data first, and then with the matrix command, you are specifying how the matrix is set out. And in this case, it's sort of going in order with two columns. That's what the syntax means there. And then if you are going to work through this example in R, if you just print the word count, we'll show you what R has has registered uh, as as the word count. Okay. We'll Show you precisely this uh, table of counts that we had on one of the previous slides. The basic command to run the test is then chisk.test, which stands for chi squared.test. Chisk.test command is then applied to the matrix count. This gives you the same results as previously, albeit presented slightly differently. So you get the same numerical answer. The running error is again less than the same numerical answer, the running error, same interpretation as before as regards to the people. 